In this video, it's time to get myself past the point of no return by hacking into Heidi's body. Loads of you will be happy to see that that ridiculous spoiler has been removed. Right, let's send it. Found uh, a bit of a hole in this corner, so that's gonna need a repair. I noticed a problem, the arch actually cracked. In the last video, I revealed my quite crazy and quite controversial plans for this old banger Mark II Escort that I like to call Heidi. And in this video, it's time to make a start on those plans and get myself past the point of no return by hacking into Heidi's body. If you're a regular viewer of my content, give the video a thumbs up now. If you're new, click subscribe and welcome. I'm Marcus Hayes, and today it's time to get a bit crazy with Heidi. The more I look at Heidi with these wide arches on, the more I think that maybe, just maybe, I will end up fitting wider ones to the front that match the rear. I can make my mind up with that later on. Essentially, I'll have to cut out less metal for these smaller arches than I would for the larger arches. So um, yeah, I'll make my mind up about that later on because I'm actually gonna be cracking on with doing the necessary cutting and welding and fabrication to the body for the rear arches to fit properly. I'm sure loads of you will be happy to see that that ridiculous spoiler has been removed from Heidi's boot lid. But at the moment, my opinion is that the wing will be getting fitted. So um, yeah, maybe in this video, I'll have the courage to actually drill the holes and go past the point of no return with that particular modification. Definitely need to jump back on the filler work that's unfinished on this body shell as well. Maybe I'll get time to do that in this video. But as I say, I wanna make a start on getting the rear arches fitted to this thing. I've actually removed the rear one from the driver's side and I've put a load of tape on the body. And what that's gonna mean is that I'm able to essentially mark where I'm gonna need to cut. And I'm definitely feeling a bit anxious <laughs> about cutting into Heidi's body, but you know, I could spend another 10 hours thinking about where exactly I want the arch and, and whatnot, but ultimately, I need to uh, make a decision and uh, make a cut. Now, let me quickly talk you through my thoughts in terms of where this arch is gonna sit. Now, I explained in the last video that, you know, these arches are flexible. So although that is now sort of uh, the wrong shape and it's sort of leaning on the door, that can be bent around and I'll be able to use heat when I actually go to finally fit these to make sure there's no kinks in it or whatever. But um, yeah, it's worth noting that <laughs> Escort wheels always kind of seem like they're a bit too far back in the arch. Now, the gap between here and here is roughly the same, but because the arch sort of sweeps up like this and then down like that, yeah, it kind of gives the impression that the wheel is further back in the arch. And when the car's lowered, it looks like that even more. But this arch obviously is just, you know, a, a continuous shape all the way round. Now, how I had it before and how the other side is still taped on is around there. This is the sort of center piece, the center section of the arch, uh, and it's around there. And then, yeah, as I say, this bit is just forced to follow the shape of the door. But I reckon the ideal position for this is probably a tad further back. However, with it in that position, there's a couple of problems. First of all, I'm not gonna be able to get this arch to follow the shape of the door there. Uh, it'll, it'll just, you know, even once I've bent that around, it's gonna be a bit closer to the door here. You know, it's sort of flush with the, the door shut, but then, you know, it's gonna be away from the, the door shut here um, and probably get worse as it goes down. So that's not ideal. Another thing is that down here, it'll end up being, if I take that off, the arch will end up being sort of further this way than this inner bit, um, which I don't want to do either. If anything, I want to cut the outer so that it's in line with that. So then, uh, worst case scenario, I've just got to put a flat piece of metal in to sort of get rid of the hole that will inevitably be left there. So I think where these are going to go 
that is roughly you know where this was when it was taped on and where the other one still is uh with it still being taped on so in theory it will kind of look like the wheel is a bit too far back in the arch but as i say it kind of does anyway because of the shape of the original arch. Let me go around the other side and I might be able to show you what I mean a bit better. So if you look at this arch, it really does look like the wheel is too far back in the arch, but this does sort of follow that nicely, albeit with this being forced around. So you can see my dilemma, you know, does that look more silly than it would look if uh, this arch didn't follow this door? And that's the decision I'm gonna to have to make. Um, I'm pretty sure I can go ahead and you know, cut out the body and do whatever tubbing is necessary and then sort of make my mind up where the arch is gonna sit after that because um, yeah, I think there is uh, enough sort of room for error. Um, but yeah, it is a decision that I need to make. Do I have the wheel looking like it's too far back? I essentially have the arch looking like it's too far forward or do I just not worry about it following the door here? Not sure. Do let me know what you think in the comments. Now, if we go into the boot, I can kind of explain what I think I'm gonna to need to do once I've cut uh, enough off of the outer and sort of rear quarter bit. Essentially, I'm gonna end up with a hole here, right? Because some of this is gonna be cut away. And then I'm gonna to need to fill that hole with metal, right? So I'm gonna to need to join this to what's left of this. And I've been getting loads of advice from videos on YouTube where people have fit universal arches to their cars and from my good friend, Lee Booth, who's just done some tubbing and stuff on his 100E project that he's fitting Mark One Escort bubble arches to. So yeah, although I'm pretty sure I'm not gonna have to do as extreme tubbing as Lee did, you know, I'm gonna have to do something to make sure that there's not a hole here basically. But despite the amount of advice that Lee's given me and despite the amount of videos I've watched, this is very much going to be a sort of a dive in and make it up as you go along job, just like most of the jobs I do on my cars, to be honest. But yeah, over this side, there was a load of previous welding down in this area, which I just covered with sealer. So some of that now may end up getting cut out. If only I've made my mind up to turn Heidi into a drift car before I've done a load of work that I'm now gonna have to go back on, but it is what it is. All right, so it's time to start thinking about marking this now for cutting. Now, it's worth noting that the edge of the arch here is about probably 20 mil away from where the hole is gonna be to actually screw it to the body. Uh, so in theory, you could cut the body of the car away right up to here, but you know, I'm gonna give myself some room for error and come a little bit lower than that. Also, I wanna potentially try and do like a return lip on the car uh, so that then I can weld in whatever tub piece I need to to that to make it stronger. So that means I'd have to go down, you know, another say 10 mil. So essentially I need to draw three lines. One line where, you know, the outside of the arch is gonna be and then another line sort of where this bit is gonna meet, although I am gonna give myself room for error, and then another line lower than that, about 10 mil, which is the bit that's gonna get folded out this way all the way around if I do decide to do that return lip. Now, obviously, if you don't cut enough, you can always cut more out, but if you cut too much on the first cut, then you're screwed. And um, <laughs> I don't wanna be in a position where I've got to weld a standard arch back into this to then cut it back off to, to do what I'm planning to do. So yeah, I need to think a little bit longer and then just uh, dive in and make my mind up. But I am gonna be being conservative with what I'm cutting off. After scratching my head for a little bit longer about where exactly I was gonna position the arch, it was time. Right. Let's send it. I marked where the outside of the arch was gonna go, and then I marked where the two center fixings were gonna go. I then measured and drew another line five centimeters down from my first one in the center part of the arch, but 
making it taper just like the plastic arches do. And then it was time to cut the arch out. I took my time making sure that I was only cutting the outer arch and not cutting into the inner arch which is behind it. Then I decided to shave along here to separate the inner from the outer which worked well and once I'd pulled the outer arch piece off I could see that most of the inner arch was rusty so I cut the rusty bits off. Then it was time to think about putting a return lip in the outer arch. I slowly but surely folded the outer arch out with a pair of pliers and I used a hammer to create a kink where the return lip ended. The return lip is going to put a whole load of strength back in the quarter panel and it worked way better than I feared. With Heidi's wheel out of the way I could do the final bits of trimming to tidy things up in the bottom corners and then I had a go at trying to back the inner arch out to meet the outer arch which didn't work at all so I was going to have to resort to a ghetto method going to have to cut slits in it. The first slits I cut weren't actually allowing enough movement in the inner arch. So I carefully made the slits a bit bigger and then I was able to get the inner arch to actually meet the outer arch. All right, so I've basically now resorted to a method that I've seen loads of people use online to do jobs like this, but I was hoping that I wouldn't have to use this method. Cut a load of slits in it just so that you know the inner arch is now more manipulatable. You know, I'm able to bend it out um, to meet the outer. And yeah, I'm about to do the same thing in here. So um, I'm just hoping that I'll be able to press these in and just get a tack on each one or a few tacks on each one to hold it to the outer. Uh, and then ultimately, this is all just gonna need a load of sealer to, to cover it up. Over here, I can't see how I will be able to get welds on this, admittedly, but it is all close together. So, you know, I'll just cake a load of sealer on it and, you know, that's solid. It's not flapping about or anything. And then, yeah, as we go further up, it's all cut so that we are able to push each bit to the outer as necessary. Anyway, at this point, I think I'm gonna stop what I'm doing and just get the other side to the same stage. So uh, I'll see you once I've done that. If you're a petrol head like me, you need to check out petrolheadstyle.com. At Petrol Head Style, we supply clothing and other cool products to petrol heads all around the world. Our team of talented artists painstakingly create every design, taking inspiration from the coolest cars and engines that have ever existed. We are constantly adding new designs to our website, so make sure you join our mailing list to be notified of new releases and to benefit from exclusive discount codes and to enter our regular competitions to win free products. We have t-shirts, hoodies, and sweatshirts in a wide range of colors available in all the sizes. We have a wide range of different styles of mugs, and we have stickers and magnets. Everything at Petrolhead Style is premium quality, but we keep the profit margins small to give you Petrolheads the best value possible. So head over to petrolheadstyle.com now to grab some bits. Style for Petrolheads, by Petrolheads, Petrolhead Style. All right, so passenger side arch is now off as well. And this side was in way better shape than the driver's side. This has had an inner and an outer arch at some point, but when I cut the outer arch off, the inner arch was in quite good shape. So as you can see, I've left a load of it hanging down. This is gonna get trimmed off, but it's better if I trim it off after I've welded the inner to the outer. Around the other side, I basically had to cut all of this off because it was rotten, whereas this side, I've got way more excess. You can see that I've put this in weld through primer already. I gave it a clean up first, but when I took the outer arch off this side, I could still see weld through primer from when this had an inner and an outer arch. Now I've spent a little bit more time on the other side as well. And yeah, this side, it's just way more rusty. I end up having to use like a cutting disc to clean up these flaps. Just trying to get it as clean as I can before I think about welding it. And I've been trying to get in here with a wire brush. I levered these out of the way a bit and then got in there with a wire brush because there was loads of surface rust in there. I've also found a bit of a hole in this corner. So that's gonna need a repair, 
but I'll do that afterwards. Whilst this is sort of all hanging, it makes all this a bit more manipulatable. But um, yeah, I've cleaned up things as best I can. I chucked a load of cure rust in there. I've also chucked cure rust on these flaps after I cleaned them up. So I'm not actually sure whether cure rust is sort of whirled through. So I might have to tickle them with a wire brush again just to make them shiny. But um, yeah, a wire brush just wasn't cleaning these up. So I had to use a disc on the grinder. But yeah, we'll let that cure rust have as long as possible to go off before we ultimately hit that with weld through primer as well. So I suppose now I'll see if I can get some welds on this side, but before I close up this hole, I'm actually gonna throw in some of the Kent Europe transparent wax coat. So uh, yeah, whilst I can get in there, I'll just spray a load of wax coat in there, which should slow down any future rust. I won't worry about round here, because um, yeah, I can get in there afterwards. This mask and tapes on here from where I done the world through primer so yeah i can get in there quite a lot of the way from here but uh yeah that front bit i won't be able to the nozzle on the wax coat ensures that it sprays out in all directions i poked it in between the inner and outer arches and squirted a load in and once i've wiped away any excess i started banging the inner arch to meet the outer arch all the way round I then cleaned up the outer arch with a wire brush on a drill and then it was time to start welding. I put a few tacks on each tab but before I'd finished the passenger side arch my gas ran out but the bottle was already nearly empty. I turned my attention to the other side getting it all cleaned up, weld through prime and wax coated before I left the garage that day and when I returned the next day armed with some more welding gas I finished the welding on the passenger side and then jumped on the driver's side which was going to be a bit more difficult to weld the inner to the outer in the bottom corners because I cut away so much but it looked like it was going to work. I slowly but surely welded up the bottom corner doing one tab at a time and then the rest of the arch was really easy. I trimmed off the excess tabs from both sides before then grinding the welds down with a grinding disc and finishing off with a flat wheel on the grinder to make things a bit smoother. After a quick test fit of the arch for clearance, I cleaned up the welds with a wire brush and a drill and then spent some time admiring my work before diving straight in to removing all the loose undersill from the inner arches. When I test fitted the driver's side arch, I noticed a problem which was solved by my club hammer. And then I grabbed the Kent Europe epoxy primer to cover all the bare metal on both inner and outer arches. And then it was time to chuck some sealer about. I started with this big hole before then moving on to the slits in the inner arch. And it wasn't long before both inner arches were looking a whole lot more tidy. Whilst the sealer was drying, I thought I might as well try and trial fit one of the plastic arches, just using screws for the time being. Getting the center two screws lined up and drilled and screwed in was easy. And then I used heat to soften up the plastic in the arch to try and make it more malleable to try and get the rest of the screws in and make it follow the shape of the door, which at first was going way better than I feared it would. But then, disaster. The arch actually cracked where one of the screws was. I did manage to get the arch screwed on, but as well as the crack, it was kinked, which I tried to solve by cutting some of the lip off, but that didn't really help. After scratching my head for a little bit, I decided to remove the arch and focus on sealing the outside of the arches where the welds were, just to make it look a bit more presentable. I then removed the masking from inside the boot and cleaned and keyed up around the area where the inner tub meets the rear quarter panel, ready to chuck some sealer on. I used an absolute ton of the stuff and then I smoothed it off with a paintbrush which tidied the job up nicely and hid all my slits. And while the sealer was out, I also waved it on the inside of the rear panel where I did the welding recently and underneath the rear panel as well. 
All right, so there's definitely some positives and some negatives to take away from this job, but this is probably potentially the most technical thing I've ever tried to do on a car involving a MIG welder. And um, yeah, it looks like it's come out pretty good. Now that we've got a load of sealer on the inside and you can't see any of the slits, um, yeah, as I say, it is looking pretty good now i think i am going to add some sealer in places i've just noticed um that looks like sort of the uh remnants of a slit and yeah i definitely want to make sure that there's no slits left you know potentially in the future when this thing's making loads of tire smoke we don't want none of it coming inside the car and um yeah we don't want any water getting in or anything like that so yeah this will get another coat of sealer and then i'll probably spray a load of kent europe rubber guard on those inner tubs as well now obviously this isn't finished and i was intending to completely finish you know doing these rear arches in this video but as you would have just seen um yeah we had a bit of a disaster now that could be repaired um admittedly but i need to figure out a way of getting the kink out of it that sits here when I've got the arch on here and I'm actually trying to make it follow um, this shape. It was actually going really well until I got the uh, last screw hole in. See, I'm not going to bother trying to screw the arch to the other side just in case I end up getting a different set of arches. But I'm just wondering if I can modify this to make it a bit more manipulatable, a bit more malleable. I've seen a lot of aftermarket arches that have like, you know, this bit sort of cut away. So, you know, they've got like a, a weird sort of shape there. And it actually looks cool, but I'm wondering if having that sort of cut away a bit would enable this to sort of twist a bit better and um yeah then it might actually fit a bit better not sure but now that i've basically potentially ruined one of these arches um you know there's nothing stopping me potentially having a go at cutting some of this out to see if i can get this one to fit a bit better and if i can then yeah maybe i'll buy another set of these arches they are like 20 quid they're so cheap and then we won't have to bother trying to repair this one um, so yeah, to be continued on that, but I am really happy with what I've done with, uh, this, you know, tubbing, I, I suppose you'd call it, even though I didn't actually end up needing to put any tubs in because I was able to utilize the original inner arch. Obviously around this side, I still do need to put a patch in down here and I'm probably going to crack on with that next time I come around the garage. And yeah, once that's done, then I can slap a load more sealer on the inside. But yeah, as you would have just seen, we've, uh, got inside the boot all sealed up as well you know these areas will just get a dust of the uh, beige paint next time I'm throwing a bit of the beige paint about and yeah managed to get some sealer on these bits which I didn't get around to doing after I've done the welding on the rear panel which I still need to put a load of filler in to finalize the shapes but uh, yeah progress has definitely been made in this video this side it's definitely looking a lot better just because, you know, the inner arch wasn't as rusty. So I was able to leave more of it and, yeah, do a better job of making it meet the outer. But, um, yeah, this this area went a bit weird, but, uh, yeah, it's all covered in sealer. Sealer covers a multitude of sins. <laughs> yeah, I want to keep these marks. Um, one there and then there's one under here just because that's where uh, these two center screw holes go roughly and um yeah the line which is underneath this other bit of tape here sort of shows how high i plan to have the arch you know just in case i do end up working out a way to use these arches so um yeah this will stay as it is for now with those marks until I've figured out what's going on with the actual plastic arches. But yeah, I've been around here on three separate days doing this job, not full days admittedly, and it's absolutely fine. You know, this stuff just takes time and the time just disappears. But I have really enjoyed getting myself past the point of no return with these new crazy plans, which I know so many people disagree with, but you know what? When you're messing around with your cars, you need to do what you want to do, not what you think other people want you to do. So as you can see, I've got so much stuff to pack up and then I need to get the wheels back on this thing and get her back in the garage. And then 
I get to jump back in my favorite Escort and make my way home. So I'm gonna end this video here. Do give it a thumbs up if you thought it was any good. If you didn't, feel free to give it a thumbs down. Click subscribe if you're new. Check the links in the description to follow me on Facebook, TikTok, and Instagram. I'll leave a link to my website down there and the Petrol Head Style website, along with my email address for anyone who wants to contact me. Massive thanks, as always, to my patrons for your ongoing support. But other than that, until next time, thanks for watching.